Hi there, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be discussing about how we can use IAM roles in order to launch our EC2 instance and how those roles uh, we can utilize in order to give the permissions to the user and how we can attach the roles to the EC2 instance. So in order to know more about IAM users and role, you can just watch my previous video. I have made a video on uh, IAM user groups and roles. So just a brief introduction, like IAM role is an IAM identity uh, that we can create in our account that has specific permissions. So basically IAM role is similar to the IAM user, but uh, it has an AWS identity with permission policies that define whether that identity can or cannot do what are the things or what are the permissions that are being allowed to that particular role. And that role we can assign it to the EC2 instance also. So basically it, it contains all the permission policies. We can all use our custom defined policies also. We can use AWS managed policies also in that case. So directly I will jump onto the lab today. You can watch my previous video on IAM role and users in which I have detailed uh, all the things uh, about the user groups and roles. I will paste the link in the description so you can watch that video also. So moving on to the lab, in today's lab, I will just create one IAM user and I will also create one role and using that user credentials, I'll be logging into the EC2 instance and then I will show you how, what are the things, what are the things I can access and what are the permissions that have been given to the role and I will use the AWS EC2 instance connect in order to connect to the EC2 instance. So all those things I'm going to cover in this today's lab. Okay, so this is my root account. I'm logged to my root account. So we'll go to the EC2 dashboard. Now here we are going to launch an instance, but before launching instance, as I said, we will create a user. So let's move on to the IAM. So here in the users, there are already a few users are there. Let's create our new user. So I will give the name my easy to yes. You can choose this two option program to access using the access key ID and secret access key that will be generated when we'll be creating uh user we can also use that using the access key id and all so while uh, after once we create this is this user i am user it will give you to download that credentials and the key uh whether the user can change enables a password that allows other user to sign into the console or not so i'm just choosing this okay custom password let's put over here so this is the this password is for the access to the aws console so I'm just putting the password. So I'm just removing this required password reset. Let it be the same. And next permissions over here. So here uh, I'm not using any of the group. So I'll add existing policies directly over here. So I'll give him two permission. One is EC2 full access in order to launch an EC2 instance that particular user can launch. And then next, we will see if any issues are there. Uh, one more thing we need to provide over here because we need to use EC2 instance connect. So we will just provide that permission also. So you can see EC2 instance connect. If you don't give this one, the user will not be able to the user will be able to launch the EC2 instance, but will not be able to connect to the EC2 instance. So make sure you give permission for this one also, EC2 instance connect. Next, you can keep this blank. So now you can see these are the two managed policies that are AWS managed policies. One is Amazon EC2 full access and EC2 instance connect. This I'm giving to my user, my EC2S, and create user. So these are the access key ID and secret in order to log into the 
console aws uh, not in the aws console aws cli so we can use this one this access key id and the secret or we have to keep it downloaded so future use we can use this credentials in order to log into the cli when we do the aws configure in the cli it asks for the credentials so this access key id and secret access key we need to provide you can just watch my video on um, AWS CLI, so you will get the details how to utilize this option while uh, using AWS CLI. So this is the uh, login URL for that user. So I'll just copy this one. I'll take another browser. You can also open in incognito mode also. So I'll just click OK. So this is a user my easy to s and password so i'll sign in my ec2 sign in can just choose maybe later they're changing lots of changes to the interface also now you can see over here if i try to access s3 services over here just for the quick review over here you can see over here you don't have permission to list the buckets as you saw while creating a user i just give permission aws ec2 full access so I cannot access other services, just EC2 only. So there is currently no instances running. I'll just go to show you this one. So let's launch an instance. Okay, so I'll just give the name my EC2S. Okay, you can create a new key pair, my EC2S. This is for doing SSHN. We can utilize this PEM key, remote login. So just uh, let it be everything default. I will not touch anything over here and launch the instance. Okay, so our instance is being launched successfully. So I'll refresh this one. It's showing my old instances. It will take a few seconds to start. Okay, it started now. Now you can see because we don't have the compute option, I didn't authorize the user for that. So let's go to this connect this. And you can see this is a easy to user. You can do SSH, session manager also you can control, but this is again, we don't have the permission. Let's go back to this EC2 instance. I'll just go back, connect and click connect. Okay, that's it. So I'm able to access my EC2 instance using the, the new user that I have through its login. Now the problem is, now suppose if I want to AWS configure then I have to provide you over here AWS access key ID. I have to provide the secret access key. Then I have to provide the default region. I have to provide the default output format JSON. So this is not the recommended practice. This is not the best practice because we are uh, putting our credentials over here. Rather than doing this through the root user, we will create a role and that role we will assign to the EC2 instance and this user will be able to access that particular um, that role so we will go back 
Now, if you see over here in this instance, if I try to, if I go to the action, security, modify I am role, you can see I cannot do that because I don't have the permissions. I just have the permissions for EC2. So let's go back. I will just go back to my root account. So I'll just go to the IAM. So I will just go to the roles. Here, create a role. I'll choose over here, AWS service, EC2. Here again, um, I have to choose over here, EC2. Then uh, you can choose over here, EC2 instance to call AWS services on behalf of you. And then next. Now here, in the policy selection, I just need to have uh, I am role. So I'm just giving I am read only access. I'm not giving the full access, just read only. And then click next. So you can go through the policy, you can see assume role and all this. This is the trusted entities that we have. You can add some description, then you can write the role name my ec 2 s role. You can see this the policy being attached. Create the rule. Okay, so I have created the role. Now again, I will go to my this user. Here, I was not able to assign the role, as well as I will show you one more thing over here. Even if I this is hyphen hyphen. This is by default, this CLI is already installed in the Linux image that we are using it. And moreover, suppose if I'm writing over AWS IAM list hyphen users. So it is unable to locate the credentials. So you can configure credentials by running AWS configure. So it is telling me to configure that, then only you can. Then if the user is having access, then only we can use. Now, what we can do over here, we will go back to our root account and I will go to my EC2. Now here in this one, this is the instance that is running. So you can see action, security, modify I am role. You can see it will show you the list of roles. So this is a role we created and save. We can also create a new role over here. But this is already we created, save. So that role has been attached to the EC2 instance. Now we will go back to the user and we will just run the command again. Now you can see over here, it is showing the list of users. Okay. So this is how we can assign the role to a EC2 instance and then we can access whatever we want depending upon the permissions that we are providing. Now again, now suppose if I go back over here and actions, security, modify I am role. I just uh, make it no I am role over here and save it. And you can see, confirm the detached the existing one. Detach, that role has been detached. Now I'll go back, same command again. So you can see, unable to locate credentials, you can configure credentials by running AWS configure. That is not the recommended practice. So this is how we can utilize the IAM role. So I hope you understood what I have done over here, uh, creating a user first and uh, using his AWS console in order to run an EC2 instance in his dashboard, uh, giving him only the permission to have a full access to the EC2 instance for launching and all after launching. Then we go back to the root user, we assign the role and after assigning that role we were able to access that one once you detach we will not be able to access i hope you like my video
please do like share and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching